Hello, my castaways, and welcome back to another Stranded Deep speedrun. So, for this speedrun, we're going to be doing what's called an NG speedrun, which is essentially just a new game speedrun. And it, all it is, is beating the game the way it was intended. And that might seem oddly similar to a glitchless speedrun, and that's pretty much because it is. The only difference is that instead of not allowing ourselves to use the map, we're going to be saving and accessing the map during our speedrun to be able to examine the map itself and go from there. So it's kind of like the everyman speedrun, how you would beat the game if you were just playing normally and doing that as fast as you possibly can. Now, because of that, we're going to be doing it on a random world, and that's going to randomize the island placements, boss placements, and ending ship location, as well as everything else on that world. So I have no prior knowledge of what's going on, except for what I can see before me once the game starts. So let's get into it. So the reason we're doing this run is because three months ago, someone came to me on speedrun.com and submitted a run that was basically following this format. And it made me realize that this isn't quite in like a random glitchless run. It's, this is an NG run. Um, this is just how it was meant to be played. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, the guy who did that speedrun is Kevlar Gaming. If you haven't seen any of his speedruns or Stranded Deep content, you should go check that out because he's a great guy with a great channel. Now, I told him that I was going to record one NG speedrun to compete with his and give him three months of time to, in or well, not increase his time, to decrease his time to as low as possible. And when that three months was up, when my video was posted and his final video was posted, we'd see who was on top. So this is the culmination of that challenge. And uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see, because I still have not yet seen his final run, whose time is actually going to be the fastest. So Kevlar, good luck. Let's see how it goes. All right, in day one, where our timer starts. So right off the bat here, we have some really weird stuff. Um, I spawned in the water instead of in our life raft because the life raft spawned too close to that tanker ship. And yeah, so we just ended up in the water right next to a shark. But uh, I feel like that's kind of appropriate for me. Um, so just really quickly, I want to go over the requirements for a stranded deep speed run. Um, if you've ever seen one of my speed runs before, you have doubtless heard it before, but uh, I feel like it's still important to go over. So basically the idea is that you're trying to escape these islands, and to do that you have to find an airplane on a giant tanker ship and repair the airplane and stock it with food, water, and gas, and then fly it off the ship. You don't actually have to fly it, um, that's just the ending animation. Anyways, to uh, get the repair parts for the plane, you have to defeat three bosses that are located randomly throughout the world, and you also have to, like I said, uh, gather up ten food, ten water, and eight parts of gas to uh, stock the plane. And to distill gas, you need to put eight potatoes that you find in random locations on random islands into a fuel still, which you have to find a whole bunch of supplies to make, and uh, distill that gas overnight. And the food and water requirements are generally really easy, and I'll explain them when we get to them. So that's Stranded Deep speedruns in a nutshell. In a coconut shell. Yeah, I know. I'm so funny. Okay, so we've already gotten our uh, first, I think, two cans of gas, which is great because we need, for this run, I believe we need a minimum of three jerry cans so that we can make two fuel stills and collect up the gas in two jerry cans. Um, that'll make more sense when we get to it if you don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm basically just trolling through this wreck trying to find any supplies that I'm going to need. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more lax about this type of speedrun than my any percent because I have a lot more time to work with. Um, so it's going to be, yeah, a little bit more laid back. I'm not going to have to worry so much about item management and stuff within my inventory. I did begin collecting up the engine parts here uh, to see if I was going to perhaps get so many potatoes trying to find my way throughout the islands that I'd have gas to use a gas-powered engine, but I don't believe that we actually got to that point. So the plan on this first island is basically just to do what we're doing now, collect up anything that we can find uh, that's going to help us with the speed run. We're going to go ahead and get a shelter made up, get our tools made up, and then we're going to save and exit the game 
check out what the map looks like, and then pop back in, and hopefully that will be the last time that we actually have to check the map. Um, I, it's definitely going to slow us down a little bit. The timer is going to go for the entire time that we are in the overworld, I guess, if you will, um, in the menu of Stranded Deep. But, uh, you know, if you can do it this way where you just check it once, maybe twice, then hopefully you can get the time down to basically what a glitchless run would be or a random seed glitchless run would be. <laughs> All right, we're gonna dump all the crap out of these crates. Very, very normal, straight and deep stuff here. <laughs> we will need those hammers to actually build a raft because we're not gonna be swimming uh, around all these islands. That's gonna be way too dangerous. So we will build a raft on this type of run just for the safety aspect, and it's a little bit faster. It's been a while since I've been doing speedruns at this point. Um, I did this run three months ago, and I'm doing the commentary uh, like two days before I post because, you know, I just can't do anything the right way. <laughs> so this is going to be almost a little bit more of a reaction than explaining the run, but uh, yeah, that might offer its own interesting parts. Okay, most of the crate organization is done. Now we just need to get a lot of our tools and spears made up. And uh, so we're gonna start off by creating an ax, collecting up any of these stone tool tips, uh, or creating stone tool tips for crafting XP so we can make the ax faster. And then we're gonna start tearing down every piece of wood on this goddamn island. our first axe so we'll go ahead and make a few spears get that next level and then we can use um, actually I'm not sure if we have any extra piece of leather but if we have an extra piece of leather we can make that into a refined axe which will make harvesting that much quicker And there's our crafting level, so we can go ahead and make a refined axe. Alright, and that is our best weapon, uh, besides a refined spear. So whenever we go kill the bosses, uh, we're going to make as many refined spears as we can, because that's going to be helpful, but we're not going to have nearly as much leather as we want, so we're still going to need to use the regular spears and this refined axe. I'm heading back into the tanker to scour the rest of it. Got a couple of air tanks and MX. That's all I need. And we're just going to go around. Uh, oh, that's right. We're getting up parts for a raft. <laughs> See what I tell you? It's almost a reaction video. Now, we only need a couple of parts here. We just need something big enough to not get flipped by a shark. And even if I had decided to make it, a small enough raft to be flipped by a shark, that's really not that big of a problem. It's just more of like a time sink because I'll have to rewrite uh, the raft in the water, which is really the only part of that's an annoyance. The sharks aren't dangerous. Nice flare gun, that's great. We're gonna, oh, never mind. <laughs> We're definitely going to end up using a flare gun at some point, though, because we're going to run out of light on an island, and we're going to need to be able to see. Those things are lovely for that. Leather, perfect. And I think that's our third jerry can right there. Yeah. <laughs> 
I wouldn't waste nearly this much time on a normal speed run, but considering our restrictions on movement speed, um, playing normally as other people say it, um, <laughs> we, uh, we're not gonna have the ability to just zip off to a box and like pick up a random crate at a, a new island we go to. We wanna have all the supplies that we possibly can as early as possible, so we just have to do less running in general, and there is no better spot in Strain of Deep than on a tanker to find whatever the hell you want. And I think that was an extra jerry can, so we should be totally good to go on those. Every piece of leather is an extra spear that can do double damage when thrown, so they are absolutely crucial. Just cycling through air cans so I could use up the one with the least air in it. Awesome, that was such a perfect crate. <laughs> We are already two thirds through our first day um, in this run, where normally I'd be already halfway through a run on an any percent. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so I was mistaken about the jerry cans. We only have three, but that's the minimum amount that we need because we'll need two jerry cans to make two fuel stills, and then we'll use the third jerry can to take the fuel out of one, destroy that to get the jerry can back out of that, and then fill up the second one that we've reclaimed um, with the gas from the second fuel still. All right, now we're searching around for potatoes. It's incredible how sometimes you can just, not even trying to, find three potatoes on an island, which is the maximum amount, and then other times you go searching around in all these nooks and crannies and don't find any, or even worse sometimes, at least I feel like, you search around for a really long time, don't find any, and then you're just running around later and you happen to find one that you missed. <laughs> Another unique aspect of this run is that if we actually do find potatoes and we have the crafting levels to make our fuel stills, it's going to take us so much time to make our way through these islands. We're definitely going to be sleeping overnight at least a cup once or twice more. And uh, if we don't even have all the potatoes we need, we can still distill fuel uh, while we sleep, which I'm not really sure if we do or not. 
Alright, we're getting the stone tool tips up for the pickaxe that we need to mine clay, that we need to make our fuel stills, and we're also picking up those cloths uh, so we can make extra bandages and so we can put a sail and a rudder on our ship. serendipitous little pee pee plant there for uh, in case we get poison. And this was one of the things I was kind of nervous about whenever I was starting this run. If there's not enough um, lashings in the crates that you find around an island, then there is maybe just barely enough lashings to be able to make an anchor, a sail, and um, a rudder, along with your tools, in a speed run. And uh, there's not enough, or no, 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 there's not enough to make an anchor. So it gets a little tight on resources uh, if you don't have some of those extra lashings in the boxes whenever you're searching the island. I was thinking there for a second about using the plank scrap. Um, for flooring of the raft, but decided instead to go ahead and use sticks just in case For some odd reason. I don't run into any plank scrap, but uh, Thinking back on it now. I could just tear down one of those boxes for extra plank scrap. So that would have been fun Didn't, oh wait, no, we did need to save. That was good. Uh, so I had to save there so that we could actually back out and check out the map. If I had just exited, then the game wouldn't be able to reload the save to finish the run. <laughs> However, I'm still not ready to go check out the map. We still have plenty to do right here. So uh, we're going to finish up what we want to do and then we'll check that out. I honestly don't remember why I was heading out back towards that shipwreck, maybe to look for clay in the water, but uh, clearly I decided that that was not a good decision. <laughs> Alright, and our raft is mostly complete. We got our floorboards on. I could have left some of those floorboards off. We really only technically need two. Um, maybe three, actually. Um, one for the sail, one for the rudder, and one for the anchor. I do find it really annoying, though, to try and get back up on a ship. Uh, uh, yeah, get back up on a ship and then getting hung up on those layer of boards since there's a, a little bit of height discrepancy there. Uh, so I just decided to go ahead and cover the whole thing.
and we're back to the uh, scarcity of fiber sleeves like I was talking about. So I'm trying to get the anchor made up. Even with all those extra lashings we found in the crates, we are still woefully short on fiber sleeves to actually make the uh, anchor that I need, which is going to be important because uh, as soon as I'm able to, we're going to check out that map, and the first place that we're likely to go to is the boss locations. So we have to have an anchor to be able to keep our ship there. And we also need rocks for the anchor. Close one there, we almost turned one of our precious rocks into a stone tooltip. Now that it's light out, we're going to go ahead and get our clay. As with everything in this, uh, this speedrun, I have no idea where anything is, and I don't even know if there is clay around this island, so we're just going to have to kind of search around for it. And luckily there is actually some clay and not in an absolutely abysmal spot uh, on this island. So we can go ahead and get this out of the way. Take the ration, Speedy. Take the ration. What are you doing, man? Oh, gosh. Things like that, when I look back and I'm doing these commentaries for these speedruns, I'm like, what? why didn't you do that, you know? It's just half a second, but who knows? Speedy of the past is a different person than the Speedy of the now. <laughs> That's why, because I already had like four of them. Um, I also decided to go ahead and grab this pick in case we need rocks for, sh for any reason. Um, I want to be able to mine them. If we lose our clay, uh, I don't know, it's just two leather that I really don't want to sacrifice to making another pick if for some reason I need one. Oh, that's why. I was uh, keeping it so I could mine rocks to make stone tool tips uh, for refined spears. All in all, I don't think mining a rock is any faster or slower than just running around a nice, fresh island and picking them up. Maybe even a little bit faster, I guess, but not too much difference. Still looking for those potatoes. Thank you. 
And I believe that was the crafting level we needed for our fuel stills, so we should be all good on that. Coconut Speedy, come on. I uh, was still having trouble with my W key, um, as has been the case for like the last year, because, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, every now and then my W key messes up and I'll start auto running, which is why I run past some things, or I have to press just ridiculously hard on the W key to actually get it to go forward, so sometimes that's why my character just stops. And I'm still doing speed runs with it, so... <laughs> Okay, last thing we need, I believe, is a couple more sticks for spears and um, three more fiber sleeves for a lashing, or I claim the lashing out of that uh, structure right there, which would be the smart move, but need to check the overworld first. Ah, yes, and that's what we're doing, I believe. Yeah, here we go. So, as I said, the timer still runs while we're in the main menu. Um, you know, I don't feel like it's fair to allow someone to pause the speed run just because they're looking at the uh, map. And, you know, looking at the map is just going to give you a really good idea of where everything is. So, uh, yeah. And this is the world we're working with. So, we're going to have to make our way out to this far off boss location to the right first. And then we're going to head back towards uh, the closest one to us on the left and then the one up at the far left and then down to the ending ship all right so let's get back into this game come on speedy let's get back into the game you've looked enough i'm probably taking a picture of the map with my phone so i can easily reference it but yeah And we're back. All right, so like a cool minute, little, maybe a little bit more off of the uh, speed run time. Um, still counted, though. I don't think that we go back into the overworld any more times in this run, but if we do, it's going to be for an equally short stint. Yeah, so we're reclaiming this lashing from the structure since we don't have enough fibrous leaves on this uh, island, and we're going to use that as the last lashing we need for our anchor. With the rocks, Speedy, with the rocks. There you go. And a stick. Yeah. 
And after we make this um, anchor, we shouldn't need this hammer anymore, so we can discard that. Once we make it. All right. Oh, nope, we're intending to make a uh, engine, so I guess we will hang on to this hammer. But for now, we can go ahead and get off this island, so. So as I said when we were looking at the map, we're going to be heading off, I believe, in the northern direction, if I am remembering the map correctly. And we're going to kind of zigzag back and forth between the islands so that we can pick up any potatoes or any other supplies we need, you know, stop off to save, sleep, whatever we need to, and then go off to that first boss location, which we have no idea which it is, which boss it is. And as I said earlier, I've taken the liberty of speeding up the sailing time. Um, so here in a couple seconds, we will start fast forwarding. And as you'll notice, the in-game timer for the speed run is sped up along with the game. So it's uh, all above board. Here we go. And for once, I can actually talk to you guys while we're having uh, increased speed. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, I said I probably still won't, but I am. Um, so we're heading off to this first island. There's going to be boars and snakes and hopefully potatoes here. But uh, yeah, we'll see, won't we? All right, and we're back in real time. Barely missing that rock. So I'm just trying to get my ship around to like a better part of the island to take off from so I can just kind of bail off the island and then get right on my way, not have to worry too much about which direction I'm going. I know that I'm going to be going in that uh, continually south direction, or north direction until we hit where we need to go. So I'm not going to try and stay long here, we're just going to check a few crates and stuff for any supplies we need. Hey, that's a that's a mighty fine crate right there. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna try and get up any potatoes and lashings here too. Now I really hate these islands for looking for potatoes. There's so much foliage on the ground, it's really hard to see things. Um, and of course there's snakes and boars, which makes it exponentially more dangerous. Every now and then you'll get a potato that spawns halfway into these rocks and even though it's unlikely that they spawn inside the rocks, it's even more unlikely that you're able to reach them from within the rocks, but every now and then that happens, so that's what I was looking out for. I'm just going to try and stay away from these guys. I'd really like to not attract their attention, but obviously that backfired. <gasps> Man, he won't die. All right. I, if you hit him right, just right in the face, their little, like, tiny little mouth, it actually does hurt them. Uh, but it's very hard to do, especially when you're trying not to get messed up by him. And this is actually great. It did cost me some health, but I'm going to be able to heal up from that really easily. And that gave me, I think, two hunter levels off of that. An extra two hunter levels will translate to about a 15% increase in how much damage I do with every, every action that causes damage. So that's pretty valuable. Getting real unlucky with these potatoes, though. <laughs> Oh, there we go. First one. And seeing potatoes on these shady sides of the island is just so much more difficult. You 
getting stuck behind the yucca tree there. Quite, quite stuck. <laughs> All right, and not finding any of those potatoes very quickly, we are just basically going to get the hell off the island. Um, I don't want to spend too much time searching around for potatoes on these in intermediary islands. There's going to be enough that, unless I'm just really cursed, which, believe me, it has happened before, um, I should find uh, at least seven more potatoes on, you know, the next, like, what, like six islands we're going to run across. I have done um, practice speedruns on, especially when I was doing the random seed speedruns where I would just go to sometimes to like 10 different islands and not a single potato it it does happen it's pretty rare but yeah every now and then I'm just gonna go ahead and sink those um, lashings into those coconuts, turn them into the coconut flask we need for the water requirement of escaping so that we can get those lashings out of our inventory and just be done with it. Um, you can see there, I went ahead and chucked the uh, crate full of gas supplies. I don't think that's gonna be a reality. And uh, yeah, so I decided not to carry it around anymore. Ooh, look at that smooth transition, baby. That was perfect. <laughs> All right, and just a warning, we got another fast forwarding coming up. Gonna keep on heading off in this north direction, get to the next island before it gets dark, and then we're gonna get some sleep. All right, here we go. Isn't the music kind of fire whenever it's sped up? Yeah, I know, right? Like if it was, if it wasn't 300%, like it was maybe 200%, it'd sound like a, I don't know, like one of those like old SNES games, maybe, maybe newer version of it, something like that. See that past speedy was talking about something, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, seeing something off over there, but uh, I think that's our next destination island after this one. Luckily, we are on one that doesn't have one of those giant rocks, so all we have to worry about here are the giant crabs, which honestly are not too much more dangerous than regular crabs. So. I cut that fast forward off a bit early, huh? All right, we just gotta get a tree down and get a shelter made up so we can get through this darkness. Uh, I really don't measure my speedruns by in-game time. Uh, I know that's like a big thing that console players do because that's pretty much the only method they have to officially track it. Um, I should probably do one that focuses on in-game time, but uh, I've always focused on real-world time because I kind of came up with speedrun.com. So uh, yeah. I, Generally, whenever it's dark like this, I just sleep through the night because the lack of visibility is not worth it to screw around with whenever I can just skip the time entirely by sleeping. Like, that cost me what? 45 seconds? And now I can see for a whole nother 15 minutes, so that's great.
What, what do you think you're gonna do, huh? You're just gonna come up here and pinch me to death? It's not even a good strategy. Yeah, you too, huh? And that's another 8% or 5? 5 or 8% on our hunter level. So, uh, super sweet. I think <laughs> you'd think that the guy who made the uh, ultimate Stranded Deep leveling guide would remember the information you put in there, but uh, it's an extra, I want to it's somewhere between 5 and 8%. It might even be 7.5%. Um, percent for every hunter level that you get of damage you do so uh every hunter level is really just such such good help for killing those bosses still looking around for those mythical potatoes Again, turning some of these coconuts into flasks. Just go ahead and get that done as we get the lashings back. Are we going to dip out again? I guess we are going to dip out again. Oh, that's right. I had to very quickly uh, close the game and come back to it. So uh, I exited straight to desktop from there and started the game back up. So I probably did actually should be adding a couple seconds to my time. Um, hope that I will be forgiven for that. But at the same time, it didn't afford me any extra help with this speed run. So yeah, be that as it will. And we're right back to making spears. So being so close to the boss location, we're just going to go ahead and prepare up any spears that we're expecting to lose. So I want to have some extra ones, uh, just go ahead and get them made up and have them in my inventory instead of in those crates. I want to fill every single spot that I possibly can because getting the spears back from these bosses is going to be a lot less realistic than it normally would be in a speedrun. So, you know, normally I'd be able to just chuck like you know, two dozen spears into Luska or something, and then I could get them back from him by speed walking up to him, but I definitely don't want to screw with that on this type of run. Go ahead and save it here. <laughs> As Kevlar did in his first NG run, if uh, the intent was that if I did die in this run, you notice we didn't have permadeath on, it's because the run is supposed to go on. So whenever you die in an NG run, you restart from your last save. Um, like, I, like I've said, a set of, um, like I've said a couple times, this is the, you know, NG, uh, the everyman speedrun, so playing as it's intended to, and I'm sure that pretty much everybody, if they died in, you know, the game that they're playing, is going to reload from the last save.
Okay, now I'm not quite sure if we're coming up on an island or a boss location, but we will have another fast forwarding here in a bit. I believe this is the first boss location. Yeah, I seem to be staring pretty intently. Yep, yeah, that's a, that's a boss location. I believe that's Luska. Um, that's usually the only one that you can see so clearly off in the distance. Well, that's a really interesting sped up tune. I'm not sure I've heard before. <laughs> All right, so first boss fight. It's kind of unfortunate that our first one is Luska because he is the boss with the most health. So, you know, the better play would have been to have him as the lost, lost boss, the last boss, um, so that we would have more hunter levels and therefore do more damage uh, while we were fighting him. Now this is something that I had to do a lot in some of the early speedruns before speedwalking was a thing. Um, where, you know, with speedwalking I can get back to these crates super quick and get spears out of them super quick. But on a normal run I need to have them all placed up here so I can clear up as much inventory space as possible to be able to hold as many spears as possible so I don't have to keep on going back and forth to replenish my stock. And one of the dangers of doing this is that, as you can see, the buoy is moving back and forth ever so slightly. And despite that being a very small motion, it is moving those crates just a little bit. And whenever a storm hits, it moves them a whole lot more. So in some of the more tragic runs I've done before, I'd be down there fighting Luska, um, usually underneath the buoy chain because he glitches and it makes it a lot easier. But can't do that on this one. Um, I would be uh, sitting under the buoy chain, then I'd see a, a crate just fall and whip past me at the speed of light. And uh, yeah, that was always a, a bad time because it basically meant the end of my run. So I took a little bit of a different method. Um, I have done a glitchless run where I fought Luska from within the water. And while that's entirely possible, it is hectic as hell and pretty hard to watch too because there's a lot of whipping around that's involved. Um, I did that for a bit on this run and then I also kind of did what I feel like most people do um, where they go up on their raft and they fight him. And that is notably easier. Um, for the longest time I thought that the the little whips that he does with his tentacle like that where he pulls you into the water did a whole lot of damage but they actually do um, less damage than a regular giant crab strike so it's basically doesn't even hurt you at all it just moves you around and makes it easier for him to bite you so here's there's the method right there um, when you're fighting in the water with Luska or another boss you're basically trying to line up their hitbox intersecting with you with a jump out of the water. And by doing that, it makes it so that your like your character's body is outside of the available range of the hitbox since it can only hit you from within the water. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically you're just jumping out of the way um, to put that in a lot more simple way. And uh, it makes it impossible for him to hit you. It's really hard to time things like that, but if you can get the timing down, it's basically possible to do a completely flawless Luska fight because he can't hit you. The same thing works with his tentacle uh, when he goes to, oh, that was an interesting one. Um, uh, the same thing happens with his tentacle. If you jump right as his tentacle whips out to hit you, you can jump over the tentacle and not get pulled around by it. However, that's even more difficult to do than dodging his body since the tentacle kind of happens at way faster speeds. I 
feel like I should be dead by now. Like, I got bit, what, three times? And then, yeah. Um, that is a minor glitch that happens if you access a crate and you keep on walking, it stays open. Uh, I realized that was happening and tried to close it as soon as possible, so, you know, I wouldn't possibly be using a glitch. Um, I guess you could argue I kind of did there on accident, but, uh, again, you know, that didn't really afford me very much. Also, this game is so goddamn glitchy, it's pretty hard to do a... That's, that's a real glitch for Solana. If you can get through the game without a glitch happening, that's the real remarkable world record, honestly. You see there, I just dodged his tentacle, not on purpose, um, but not even by jumping, just by dodging to the side. So we're gonna, he's dead now, we're gonna try and get as many spears out of him as possible, and hopefully the refined spears. Ah, I think we lost a couple. All in all, it wasn't the, you know, smoothest fight ever, but uh, I've certainly had rougher ones. See how those boxes move to nearly the edge of that. That box was dangerously close to falling off the edge there. Alright, and now we're off. We need to go basically back the same direction we came from. went ahead and pulled out, well we need our compass to actually navigate, but uh, went ahead and pulled out the flare gun there. Oh, what did I do? Uh, I was trying to move the raft around and I ended up flipping it. Hey, um, I pulled the flare gun out because I expect we're going to come up on, well we're going to be trying to cover as much distance as possible. We don't want to stop off on the same island that we were on uh, last time just because uh, if we go there, that's one island we're going to miss uh, in an alternate route back, if that makes sense. And we need to hit up as many islands as possible so we can get our potatoes. So we need to cover distance. And I got the flare gun out to shoot it off at night whenever we actually get up to the island that we're going to end up camping on. So we can see that's what I meant to say. Ooh, interesting one. It'd be interesting to compile a lot of these songs and put them in an album at different speeds to see how they sound. I mean, it sounds a little bit frantic, but it's, generally speaking, it's it's a fine little tune. Oh, it's this song. Uh, Okay, we got way too much light here to be sleeping on this island, so I think we're just going to be stopping off for lashings and coconuts, and then we'll be on our way. This lighting as well, the sun going down or coming up can really mess with the shadows and make it so much harder to see these potatoes. Or fibrous leaves apparently. Oh, potatoes. Thank God. Three total now. I would have expected that we would have had it 
least four or five, but it is what it is. Oh, and I made one extra coconut flask, so we didn't even need those. But time is running short. We're losing daylight, so we need to get going off to the next island if we want to make that distance, which we definitely do because it's still like an extra two minutes until nighttime and just too much time. I have to look around for these potatoes, though. And thank goodness I did. Oh, and there was one hiding right behind that tree. See, sometimes they just, they're standing right there out in the opening. You just don't see them. <laughs> or your raft. You see the panic? I thought I'd, I thought I'd, you know, not anchored my raft there. You could see it, couldn't you? That, that flicker back and forth. Oh God, did I leave it? Oh, I guess we are sleeping here. It's getting pretty dark. Um, I, I guess, I guess we are. Yeah, that night sets in pretty quick. I was thinking that uh, the next big stretch of ocean, or the next island we have to go to is across a large stretch of ocean, so I didn't want to get caught in the middle of the night in the dark out there without being able to see exactly where I wanted to go. Um, that will end a run real quick, even when where you're able to check a map, because if you go off in the wrong direction, well, it's just going to cost you time. Unfortunately, we woke up way too early. Yeah, five in the morning. So, uh, light will come up, you know, pretty quick, just like the sun went down, but, um, yeah, we're gonna have to take a bit of a chance and go off in the middle of the night here. I think right about now, everything was kind of starting to, you know, come back to me. Um, it'd been, it had been quite a few months before, uh, since I'd done a run, I think, um, since, like, the last any percent run and in between this one and uh, yeah I just had to kind of get it back in my blood <laughs> but now I think you're gonna start seeing that everything's going a bit quicker and hopefully a bit more confidently so I popped that flare so I could actually you know first of all see um, but then also be able to see which direction I'm heading as we take off you have to have light to be able to see that compass um, and it's real hard to do with a lantern if you just drop it on the ground. So, yeah, just pop those. It uh, gives me a nice reference point so I can see that directly behind me is a lit up island. And I know I'm still going in the right direction, essentially. Uh, and I guess I sped this one up to 600% because it's such a long trip. I think what we're doing is going all the way back to the home island and past it to start heading off towards the second boss location. Um, but unfortunately, we just have to cover this distance. There's no way around it. <laughs> well, that's a weird one. Sounds like a chipmunk on crack when xylophone. Right, and this is our home island here on the left that we're passing.
Yeah, I'm kind of thinking past like 300%. Not going to make very good music. This is the speedrun where you saw me compile an album at the same time. <laughs> Alright, I seem to remember this place pretty distinctly. I feel like I had some trouble on this island for some reason, so let's find out. I think this should be the last lashings we need. We only need a handful more to be able to make the fuel stills, and that should uh, we already have all of our coconut flasks made up, so I want to have enough to make two fuel stills, which is going to require four, um, and then have a couple extras, one for a survivor shelter um, for saving, and then another one for making a coconut flask, an extra coconut flask, if I need an antidote at any point. And of course, we always need spears for Luska and uh, the Avia. You get those sneaky potatoes hiding in those bushes too. Hate those. That's all the potatoes, it seems like. All right, still need two more. Potatoes. I guess we didn't really have any trouble here. <laughs> I don't know why, that this part of this island really stood out to me. Maybe because I was dragging the boat over that part? I don't know. For some reason that just really stuck in my mind. Never mind. I do know why. <laughs> so uh, we got a little turned around here. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one to experience how the, uh, what's it called, the compass rose of the uh, Stranded Deep map is offset by 45 degrees. So, you know, north is at, or what would traditionally be north on the map, you know, looking straight up is actually northwest. and. You know, looking at it, you just sometimes you turn that around in your head and, you, and then you translate that to the wrong direction in game, so you start going the wrong direction. Um, yeah, if I'm the only person who's experienced that, then you're all lying, so, yeah. The whale shark was trying to tell us too, no, go to the right! There we go. I just went uh, a little bit off course. <laughs> Coincidentally, about 45 degrees off course for some reason. All right, coming up on the next boss location, which is the Avia. Um, again, would have been just slightly better if we had had the Meg before the Avia, since the Avia has a fuck ton of health. And, uh, you know, we want all those 100 levels we can to be able to kill them as fast as possible. But. At this point, it's not going to matter that much. Probably a difference of maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, which in the grand scheme of this... Hmm, I almost told you how long the speedrun is. In the grand scheme of the speedrun, it's not going to make that much difference. Need to cool down, baby. We're just getting heated up. By far, my favorite boss location, just because of this simple, static platform. Uh, the... 
The whale under Meg is static. It doesn't move. However, it's really hard to place boxes down on top of it just because of the contours of the actual whale. And this thing is just beautiful. It's flat, mostly flat, uh, static. And then not just that, but it has that entire ship underneath. So if you do drop something off the edge, um, not too far off the edge, but if you drop something off the edge, you can usually pick it up from, you know, right around it, the little rock that this whole location is perched on top of. It is a bit later in the day than I would like. You can tell it's kind of already dusky. Um, but we popped those flares so we could see. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do our best. Oh, ooh, that was such a bad time for my W key to start messing up. I about got chomped. Whoa. <laughs> I, I legitimately did not know that you could go inside of that, um, this boss location. I don't think there's anything in there. Obviously, I wasn't focusing on that at the time. Um, I don't think there's anything in there, and you may actually not be able to get in there unless you're bumped in there by Luska, but yeah, that's the first time that's happened to me. This duskiness really messed with my time. It's kind of a trick. If you hit him while he's too far away, he'll start swimming away from you. If you hit him when he's just enough above you, he'll kind of continue on and you can get a couple more shots off on him. See there, he just turned away, so, you know, I can barely get two shots off, and even that second one was a bit sketchy. But, uh,. If he goes above me, like I think I'm doing here, nope, nope, swim away. Even then, if I let him get a bit closer and then hit him, I can at least get a, another shot or two off. Bit of a risky tactic here, but uh, I'm doing this whole minor dolphin dive thing like I would do with swim jumping uh, to hopefully not get bit, and I think that might have just saved my ass there. So close. And we are really at like, oh, that was perfect. We are really at like the the last possible minute where we can be safe and <laughs> yeah get, get back to our islands uh, before nightfall. Okay, we're finally off. So you'll remember that we came off from a, or came into the boss location from a slightly different location, um, or a different angle, and 
I kind of swung around the boss location so I would be pointing right where I needed to go uh, whenever that ha whenever I was ready to take off because I kind of thought this was going to happen. Wow, this is creepy. Is this the shark music? That sounded downright piratey. <laughs> um, I kind of suspected this would happen though where we'd need to take off and just know where we were going to need to go instead of you know, looking around and wasting time, essentially. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go play that pirate, or pirate? The shark music, uh, again, by itself. That was interesting. Uh, at 300 or whatever speed it was. Man, those flare guns, just the one of the best things they've put in this game. Seriously, I love it. <laughs> Feels so good to fire them, too, that lovely Pick him up, come on, just pick him up. I think I was getting confused about how many lashings I had. I definitely have enough right now. I don't need those ones I made. I just, I don't know. All right, we woke up almost a little late, honestly. Uh, I would have loved to have had it a bit earlier so we had more time in the day, but don't think it's gonna matter that much. Okay, and we need to do the customary search for potatoes on this island to uh, clear it, essentially. I just need two more. I I was real I was really worried about not having any potatoes on the later islands on the way because we only have like one or two more before we stop off and if I could skip one of those islands by getting potatoes here that'll save me a little bit of time one more just need one more or maybe we don't maybe I miscounted earlier and we're good Seems like that might be the case. And there's one extra one right there. All right, so we definitely have enough now. I'm, I'm not sure why I'm doing this, guys. I should have just been eating rations. Seems a bit silly. Wait, 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 what are you doing? Don't eat any more. Okay. Okay, now, if my memory serves, we should be heading in the southeast direction, off towards our lost, lost, god, I keep on saying that, off towards our last boss location, and then uh, also in the same direction as the ending ship.
So we're good now. We have everything we need to um, escape. We have all the food, all the water. We have all the potatoes to distill the gas. We have all the supplies to make the fuel stills to distill the gas. So we just need to get this last boss kill, get off to our final island where we will distill the fuel and sleep and then head off to the ending ship and we're done. Now, I'm sure there's someone out there who now or earlier in this run is saying, well, why didn't you just, you know, start new games until you rolled a better seed than this for doing the speed run? And you could do that. Um, I also have done my fair share of that with uh, rolling seeds for the any percent run, so I wasn't too keen on doing that. Um, not just that, but it takes an excessive amount of time to start a new game uh, build a shelter, back out, check out the map, and then if you're not happy with it, restart and then, you know, just do that over and over until you actually get the right setup. I'm not really interested in doing that for this type of run. Uh, I'm sure someone eventually will end up doing something similar to that. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy with my any percent <laughs> uh, times for which I did th that kind of thing for. And, uh... Yeah, I just wasn't interested in doing it for this run. I kind of wanted to just see what would happen with doing just one of these. And I may, I will end up doing this type of run in the future again at some point. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, like, planning one where I, like, really seek out the perfect world for this. If it happens, it happens. If not, it's just what it is. I got enough names on a record board right now. Every now and then, you'll come across an island... Oh, 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 I guess we're setting up the fuel stills here instead of, oh, okay, yeah, that's what it is. So I think we have to go off in a bit of an inopportune direction to um, go fight Luska. I can't remember the map right now, but I think he's off in like a slightly different direction than the ending ship. So it actually makes more sense for me to set up the fuel stills here, let them go ahead and distill while I'm fighting um, the... Uh, the Meg, not Luska, while I'm fighting Meg, and then come back, pick up the fuel, and head off to the ending ship, and that, if I do it that way, I shouldn't have to sleep, or I can, if I do have to sleep, then if I wake up in the middle of the night versus the morning, I should still have all the fuel to still. As I was saying earlier, <laughs> every now and then you'll come across an island that you swear you've seen before, and this is one of those, where like, I, I swear I've seen this auto-generated island before, I'm sure that's just a feeling. Um, maybe it's not. I'm sure there's, you know, only so many islands that can be created, and every now and then someone's got to auto-generate the same island they've been on before, or one that's eerily similar. So, uh, I'm having that effect right now. Alright, putting the fuel, uh, fuel, putting the... <laughs> stone rings around our fires so we can actually set up the fuel stills around those. Got our plank scrap and our clay and our jerry cans. Now we just need sticks to make the frame. Oh, we need the lashings, damn it. <laughs> All right, and they're ready to go. We just gotta put potatoes in them, make up a kindling, and uh, start the fuel distilling process. And then um, off to the boss location while it cooks. And yeah, we'll take a few extra spears, thank you. That W key, man.
Yeah, that's a trick I always use. Numpad 1 and 2. If you set those to your fire starting keys, you can start fires a lot more easily and a lot quicker than you can with the mouse buttons. At least that's how I feel. Um, you may not. So we need to distill down all of the supplies we need for this boss kill into as few crates as possible. Um, so we're going to have, you know, stuff for spears and then a ration and uh, our compass and our axe. And that's pretty much it. Oh, look, another potato. It takes three minutes for one potato to distill into one part of fuel, so it should take us 12 minutes uh, for four potatoes to distill into uh, four parts of fuel, which is the maximum capacity of a fuel distillation thingy, station. Looking around like a crazy person trying to figure out where I need to go. And we're going to stop and get set up for our um, boss kill real quick. Could have just put the uh, refined spear in your hand. But hindsight's twenty twenty. All right, last boss location coming up, and then we gotta retrace our steps back to that island. Shouldn't the whale carcass sink? I guess they probably blow it up with stuff too. Like a, any other type of carcass, right? Oh, yeah. She took a chunk, chunk at you. Same trick with Meg, you can do the whole, you know, little dolphin hops out of the water to dodge her, just like every other boss. And then other times you get bit in the face. This actually ended up working out though, because as you can see, uh, my view screen, your view screen kind of moves around when you get bit, and if you're looking directly up in the right direction, it can um, get stuck where you're able to, you know, keep on hitting or stabbing the boss so that's what happened yeah it definitely came in handy 
was really, really, really trying not to die here. Um, <laughs> obviously, I just put in, what, an hour and 45 minutes into this run. I did not want to die at this point, but Meg went down super easy like she always does. I didn't even need all those spears. All right, and we'll speed back up to the uh, last destination island. Now, one of the things I forgot was uh, my bandages. So it was really good I didn't get bit a second time because I would probably not have enough health to actually get back here before I died. <laughs> Arriving home triumphant <laughs> and bleeding. Never forget the bleeding. All right, I think that should have lined us up with our uh, where we need to go after we're done here. So yeah, cloth. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we need a lashing, which I'm pretty sure we can either just pick right out of that box or make very quickly. There we go, whole inhale. I think I still had a bandage in those box too, in that box too. What are you doing? Dude, just... Oh, God. Irritates me so much to see my care, myself doing this. Like, just sleep. Just sleep. You don't need a coconut's worth of food and water. Just... Just get it done. Yeah, pull the lantern out. And those PP are important too, just because, uh, you know, in case we get poisoned, we don't want to go search around for those. That's also the reason I brought those two last lashings. Uh, if, if I get bit uh, there by a shark, there is a cloth. I think there's a cloth lying around on the uh, ending ship island that we can use to make a bandage. So we should be all set up in case any kind of bullshit happens. Um, should be able to heal ourselves of poison or bleeding or a broken leg. Because uh, you also need two lashings and two sticks to make a splint. And uh, we should be able to fix ourselves of any problems so we can actually escape. Alright, and we got our jerry can back so we can fill up the second one. And uh, that's all the supplies we need. Alright, we are ready to go. And uh, it's bright enough in the day after waking up that we don't need to worry about that flare gun, so I just dropped it. And this will be the last stretch. So we do have a bit of a ways to go for this last little journey, but uh, once we're there, we're done.
Oh, there it is. The end. I am really curious to see what Kevlar's time is going to be on his, uh, his last run before I post this one. It'll be real interesting. Honestly, I hope he beat me. I hope he got a great time and I hope he won. Uh, that guy put in so much effort for his speed runs, and uh, you know, I, not that that <laughs> qualifies you to be the, in first place, but uh, he really—he's one of the few people I've seen to actually, besides a Gork and myself, to actually put like a really decent amount of time into doing speed runs. And uh, yeah, I just hope it went well for him. I guess is all I'm saying. <laughs> Got to crouch and make this real close so we don't lose it overboard. Yeah, we don't even need to anchor our ship. We're not coming back here. Actually, we probably should have rode the ship to the other side of the island <laughs> to get on, but, you know, whatever. Alright, there it is, baby, the plane. Alright, so we're not poisoned, we're not bleeding, we don't have any broken legs. We got all the parts, we got all the food, we got all the water, we got all the gas. So, we should be good to go. We just need to pull these coconuts out, split them open with our axe, and uh, pop them in there. And then do the same thing with the... Um, the water in the water container and the fuel in the fuel container and then put the parts in the plane and that's the speed run Alright, food and water done. Pop these parts on. And the last part. Alright, and that's it. So we have to, uh, the, the run is not technically over. We still have to get in the plane and toggle a few switches, get it going, you know, uh, tweak its buttons a little bit, and then uh, launch the plane. And whenever the launch plane button disappears from the screen, that is the ending time for our run. To be completely honest, I didn't think that I was going to be able to do this in uh, one run. I thought I was going to have to do at least like one or two attempts, but this was the first attempt and uh, yeah, it went flawlessly. Uh, well, maybe not flawlessly. There's obviously some things that could have been done quicker and a few hiccups that could have been avoided, but altogether it went pretty well. You know, the, the best ending I could possibly think of for this competition between me and Kevlar is if, you know, I post my video and he posts his video and then we find out that we actually tied. That would just be perfect. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> okay, I was wondering. So, um... I found a glitch where if you drop something close enough to the cockpit on that wing, whenever you uh, go to turn the plane around, what we just did, you can actually pick up uh, items. If your hand is there empty, you can actually pick up the item and it'll hold it in the cockpit. And there we go. There's the time. Two hours and 31 seconds. Almost two hours flat. So, man. Uh, 
gotta say, it's been quite a while since I've done a speedrun that took quite so long. Uh, it's actually rather reminiscent of the very first speedrun that I ever did that was ever done uh, on speedrun, where it was a random map, um, not on the big new world, it was on the old 5x5 map, but uh, totally random, and yeah, I mean, this is about as close as, uh, as close to that as I've ever done in a speedrun since then, so yeah, it's nice throwback. Anyways, thank you guys for watching Kevlar. Thank you for inspiring my, I don't know, want to enter into a competition with you over this. Um, yeah, it was really fun, man. I'm really glad you did this and introduced the world to speedruns of Stranded Deep of the NG variety. I don't know why I said it like that. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching. Give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, keep on surviving, which we're about to not. Huh? <gasps>